Hey guys, Josh here, and on November 2nd, my time at Sandrock will be getting its full release for Steam and consoles. I played this game a lot on PC already. Patia Games sent me a Switch review copy so I could check it out early, and in today's video, I'll be comparing these two versions and give you my thoughts and hopes that it helps you decide what platforms you'd like to get this game on. By the way, I am working on a proper review where I will be talking about the gameplay and everything, so stay tuned for that. But this video will focus on the graphics, performance, controls, as well as a few things that are missing from the Switch version. Let's start with the graphics on PC with the highest settings. This might honestly be the best looking farming sim or life sim game currently available. The textures are very well detailed, the character models look great, the lighting is fantastic, and even though you're in the desert, somehow it looks very vibrant and colorful. Of course, this will change depending on how well your PC can run the game, so I would recommend having a look at the recommended specs on the Steam page. And if you buy a game on Steam, you can ask for a refund within 2 hours of game time, if you don't like it, if it doesn't run well, or for any other reason. So it could be a good idea to give it a try if you're not sure your PC can handle it. You can probably guess, but the Switch version just doesn't look as good. One of the first things I noticed when comparing the two was that on the Switch, the lighting and shadows effects are very minimal. So when you look at buildings, for example, they will all look very flat. Whereas on the PC version, you can see tons of shadows under the roofs or windows that will slowly move throughout the day depending on the sun's position. And it might seem like a very small detail, but that gives so much life to the town. The draw distance has also been greatly reduced, so a lot of things don't appear until you get very close to them. You will see things like floating rocks in the distance, shop signs and decor popping in in front of your eyes, and also moving objects like windmills will stutter a lot, which I find a bit distracting. Of course, none of these things will prevent you from enjoying the gameplay, but they definitely break the feeling of immersion a bit, at least for me, and it's a shame because I think that was one of the best things about Senrock, just the graphics and the immersion. Another thing with the Switch version is that the textures are heavily compressed. Not all of them, this Logan poster for example looks great, but most things look blurry. Items in your toolbar, signs, the furniture, the rocks, almost anything that isn't text or a Logan poster is blurry. I think the most noticeable is in the shops or menus, where some of the icons are so blurred, it's honestly hard to even tell what they are. I played a bit in handheld mode, and it's not as bad obviously because the screen is smaller, but it's still definitely noticeable. Characters are another issue, they look somewhat fine, but also kind of rough, and I think this is something that will get fixed in the future, but for now, some of them don't move their lips when they talk, which once again breaks the immersion a bit and makes the cutscenes feel awkward. I might be slightly biased because I played the PC version for so long and going to the Switch version feels like such a step back. Maybe if you just start and stick to the Switch version, you won't notice all of these things as much as I do, but I think you would be missing out on the beauty of this game. It's a shame because I know the developers tried so hard, they even delayed it to make things better. They will keep patching it, including a day one patch tomorrow. But this game was developed for PC first, I don't think we could ever expect it to look as good as some other games that do look fantastic on the Switch, but that were built for that console from the ground up. In terms of performance, it's doing a bit better than I thought. Yes, the frame rate is not as smooth as on PC, you can see for yourself and determine if it bothers you or not, but once you get used to it, I think it's something you can learn to ignore. I didn't experience any major slowdowns, freezes or crashes. But the developers did say that if you played for more than 3 hours, you may start seeing some issues and have to restart the game in order to get things back to normal. Fortunately, the loading times were surprisingly short, I never felt like I really had to wait, and they never took more than a few seconds. I didn't get far enough to see endgame areas or more intense combat, but one thing I noticed with the Switch version is that the camera is really close behind the character, my guess is that this might be to reduce the amount of objects that are visible on the screen and to increase the performance, but being so up close in combat did get a little bit annoying. Last thing in regards to the performance, the menus did not feel as responsive and quick to navigate as on PC. There is a delay when switching between the different tabs, and another thing that is not specifically a switch issue but more of a controller issue, I think the menus are way easier to navigate with a mouse, especially when it comes to moving items in your inventory. Other than that, however, I would say that the performance on the Switch is fine. I think I would get used to it if I had to, 
And so far, it seems to be running better than my time at Porsche, even if it's not great. Lastly, there are a few content and feature differences with the Switch version. When decorating your house, you are limited with what you can do. So as of right now, you can only have a maximum of three rooms and three roofs, which restricts you in how you build your house. And the amount of items that can be placed has a limit as well. The developers are planning to bring some adjustments to these numbers. So for example, you may be able to make a bigger room with fewer decorative items or a smaller room with more items. But no matter what, it will always be limited as opposed to the PC version, which gives you complete freedom. So if decorating is a big part of the game for you, you may want to take this into consideration. Also, my time at Sunrock will offer a multiplayer mode allowing up to four players to play together. And this mode will be available as soon as the game fully launches on November 2nd for PC. However, the multiplayer on consoles is delayed until at least summer 2024. So if you are planning to play with friends, then you may want to play on PC for now. Lastly, the build of the PC version on November 2nd will include new features such as additional romance quests, the ability to raise children, new ruins to explore, and new alternate outfits for NPCs. These features will be added to the consoles by the end of December 2023, so the wait shouldn't be too long, but this makes the console versions a bit behind and just not as complete. Overall, it's the same game, same fun gameplay, but you will have to wait a bit more to get all of the content, and it's a bit more restrictive when it comes to decorating. So these are my thoughts on the Switch version of my time at Senrock. I love this game, it's really fun, keep an eye out for my review if you want, but I think it's definitely worth its price, and the developers put so much love into it. However, when it comes to the Switch version specifically, yes, it is playable if it's your only option and you don't mind the not so great graphics and not as smooth performance, as well as being a bit behind on content, then go for it. But if you have any way of playing on PC without any hesitation, I think you'll have a much more pleasant experience. I've heard it also runs pretty well on the Steam Deck. I don't have one, so I can't talk about it, but that could be a good alternative if you really want to have a portable version of this game. So let me know what you think of this Switch version of Sandrock. Which platform are you planning to get this game on? If you want to get it at all, leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and I'll see you all in the next video.